1979-1980, Arthur Boyd painted two crucifixions at Shoalhaven. The first one is titled Crucifixion and Rose. The second one is titled Crucifixion Shoalhaven. They are very special, they are very precious for me and I hope to share why with you. First of all, let me give you a little bit of background to these two paintings. In the summer 1971-72, Arthur Boyd had just come back from England after several years spent in England, and he was guest at the Bandanon residence, guest of Mr. Sandra and Tony McGrath. This visit had a profound influence on Arthur Boyd, so much so that later on he bought the property and in the late 1970s he moved there. Arthur Boyd shared the vision of a young group of artists who called themselves Angry Penguins. Who were they? They were a noisy and aggressive revolutionary group of young people and they wanted to represent the new language and the new painting of Australia. They wanted to move away from the English and the European way of painting. They wanted to find a new way that would express the Australian spirit. The fiercely Australian Arthur Boyd was now living in a comfortable English mansion. But as he looked out of his window, he could see the Shalhaven River meandering into the east, flanked on the left by a large hill plunging sheer to the water. Arthur Boyd loved the drama of the Shalhaven landscape. He told one of his friends, Wagner could have been born here. Arthur was inspired. He set up his canvas and began on plein air painting, painting in the open and in the withering heat. Arthur, he says, he watched his paint melt into the sand. Arthur did not want just to be a landscape painter. He wanted the landscape to embrace all the human stories. For him, the landscape has profound symbolism. Arthur has now found his vocation and mission as an artist, as a painter. He has found his vocation and mission within the Australian rugged landscape. A vocation that could mean pain, suffering and rejection as experienced by the crucified Christ. But in this painting, Arthur Boyd is declaring that he is ready for it, he is ready to accept the challenge. But you might say, what about the rose? The rose is the rose of England. The rose of England could never survive the ruggedness of the Australian landscape. Here the English rose floats by the crucified male figure nailed to a cross. It floats by because Arthur Boyd believes that he has to let go of the English European style of painting. He is on a new quest no matter the cost, no matter the rejection, no matter the criticism, he is going to find a new way of expressing the soul, the spirit, the spirituality of Australia. And he is going to let the landscape, the rugged landscape of Australia, to be its pathway. In fact, in commenting about the importance of the landscape, Arthur Boyd himself said, we cannot own the landscape, it owns us, or as our First Nation people constantly remind us, the earth is our mother, welcoming and nourishing us on our journey of life. The companion painting to Crucifixion and Rose is this, Crucifixion Shall Haven. This is how Jeffrey Smith described this beautiful, and challenging work of art. A commanding work of great stillness and beauty, Crucifixion Shoalhaven, 
combines dazzling light and distinct landscape with Christianity's most powerful symbol, the crucifix. The image of a full frontal nude female figure hung on a cross, suspended above the muddy waters of a river in the remote landscape of New South Wales, provides a shocking alternative to a familiar Christian theme so thoroughly depicted by the great masters of Western art. By breaking with a 2,000-year tradition and placing a woman on the cross in an Australian landscape, Boyd challenges preconceived notions of gender and cultural identity. In 1987, Arthur Boyd said about this painting, I do not believe it is enough to say he, Christ obviously, represented all of us. I do not wish to separate the ideal of suffering by allowing just the male to be seen. There has been an awakening consciousness of the potential and force of women in our time. I fully agree with some of the elements of this statement. The first part, I do not believe it is enough to say that Christ represented all of us. Yes, that is true. And I also believe with the last sentence, there has been an awakening consciousness of the potential and force of women in our times. Even Paul Francis often speaks about the importance of the role of women in society and in the church. In an interview, with the Reverend Antonio Spadaro in 2013, Pope Francis says, the church cannot be herself without the woman and her role. The woman is essential for the church. Then he continues, the feminine genius is needed whenever we make important decisions. The challenge today is this, to think about the specific place of women also in those places where the authority of the church is exercised for various areas of the church. But how long will you have to wait before these wonderful ideas start becoming a reality? But I wish to give my own reflection to the middle centers of Arthur Boyd's comment. I do not wish to separate the ideal of suffering by allowing just the male to be seen. From the phrase, it seems to me that for Arthur Boyd, the crucifixion only represents pain, suffering, and death. But if we read the Gospels, especially the Gospel of John, the cross is not just a symbol of pain, suffering, and death. To me, the cross in the Gospel of John is the symbol of total complete and unconditional love. What if then, if we interpret the cross as total, complete, unconditional love, is the meaning of this painting, Crucifixion Shall Haven? This painting then says this to me. We emerge from the waters of our mother's womb to begin our journey in the landscape of our own environment, where we are born. Our journey only begins through the pain and suffering of our mother. A pain and suffering which is life-giving because it is an act of love for another human being. Therefore, to me, this painting says that the process of giving birth must become the template and the pattern on the meaning of our human journey. It is a call, a pathway, on how we are called to live as human beings. We are called to bring, enhance, and nurture life for others. And this is a call for all human beings, male and female. And at a Christian level, this painting becomes for me a way of how to live our Christian lives. We are born from the waters of baptism as sons and daughters of God from the womb of Mother Church. And then we are sent on the mission to bring, enhance and nurture life for our brothers and sisters that we meet on our journey of life. 
until we reach our fullness of life with our God, who, through Christ, has given, enhanced, and nurtures us to the fullness of life into the heavenly kingdom. Thank you. Bye now.